My hair looks so witchy right now. Your hair is what? Witchy. It's witchy. witchy. <laughs> it's just long and like, I don't know, out of control. I should be in the forest right now in a hut. Your hair is showing how stressed you really are right now. I'm so stressed. So stressed. But I don't think we should talk about it because it gets people riled up. <laughs> Everyone gets riled up. We're gonna get our second vaccine dose. But I don't wanna hear about it in the comments. I don't wanna hear anything. Everyone, we all love each other, respect each other. Any choices that we make, I don't want arguments. Let's just all love. Why can't we all just love each other and respect each other's opinions? Whether you want it or not, I love you. You hear that? I love you. I think the reason is cooties. Cooties? Cooties, yeah. That's it? Yeah, no it's explanation? Cooties. It's just cooties. No one wants to love everybody because of cooties. Let's just love everybody. Okay. Let's all be the Care Bears. All right, so as you can tell by the title of today's video, did I even say welcome back to B-Vlogs? Welcome back to B-Vlogs. As you can tell by the title of today's video, there's something in our attic. Is my phone ringing? Is my phone ringing? It's not. Does that ever happen to you where you just think you hear it, but it's not ringing? Anyway, you can tell I'm a little bit stressed right now. A few days ago, Ty was outside bringing Tumnus out to go to the bathroom at night. I actually had a really good angle. That's okay. All right. <laughs> And he was out there and he came back in and he's like, Jess, there's a raccoon climbing the side of the house. And then he started hearing like this creepy scratching outside of our house. So he thought something was scratching to get into our attic, into our house somewhere. It was really freaking us out. And that happened a couple nights in a row. Well, it sounded like it was climbing up our eaves trough. Then we went to do some closer inspection and it sounded like it was coming from inside the roof of our house. Yeah, and it was like loud scratching, so like a large a animal. loud raking of claws. Yeah, like a creature. Like, usually if it's a mouse or a squirrel, it's Small. like that little like scratch, 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 yeah. scratch, scratch. But this was like... Yeah, like it was like a big raking scratch. Like a bear. Yeah, a bear's in our attic. Your brother was trying to get into our house. He always tries to do that. <laughs> His brother's name is Bear. He didn't know. So that freaked us out. So we really wanted to call animal control and we always like to go, what's the route where they treat them well? Humane. We wanted to do a humane animal control. So if there's something in our house, they would remove them in a very nice manner and relocate them. Usually we never want to include- performing a way to deter certain animals yeah. or if there's something that's very much well nested in, they remove it humanely and relocate them. Humanely is important. We don't want poison and like, it's just, not okay with us. So anyway, we called the person. They came a couple days ago, went into our attic, looked around, couldn't find anything except for one thing, which we actually have a picture of. It's super bizarre. Maybe you want to explain what the guy found. <laughs> All right, so got to maintain these good angles. We had the guy go up and he did a full inspection of our entire attic. Our roof's too steep, he couldn't do it on the exterior, so we let him go into the inside and he was like Spider-Manning around, climbing up everything. The only thing he found was human footprints, which would be scary, but we have a perfectly good explanation for that. When we installed their security, they did it in the attic. Hopefully, that's why there's those footprints. <laughs> Hopefully, that's why they're there. Hopefully. He said that there was the presence of mice because it's kind of cute, but also, you know, it's not great to have a mice infestation. There's little tiny paths in the insulation. You can see little tiny trails where they kind of like make their own roads through the insulation. Then, something that he really had to climb and find was a desiccated bird's nest with eggs still in it. That's about to fossilize. Pretty much. He believes that this bird's nest was made while the roof of this house was still being constructed and as soon as everything on the exterior got like kind of shut in, the bird abandoned it. But our attic is so dry that it didn't go moldy or it didn't rot, it's just desiccated. It's and fossilizing. It's about to fossilize basically. He said, you can take it down if you want or you can just leave it there and you'll have like this uh, fossil in your attic. He said it's not going to be dangerous or anything like that. So it's just, just kind of neat because like it, it seems pristine. It, like if I just saw it, I would have thought that there's a bird living in our attic, but there isn't. There's no presence of birds yeah. apart from that. So it's just weird. I wanted to go up there and crawl around myself. The only issue being is I don't think I'll fit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I if I could get into the attic, that'd be great, but it's the entrance that's the issue. Anyway, no animals, but we did find something, which was kind of creepy, kind of cool at the same time. So well, with the presence of mice, we are probably going to buy the ultrasonic animal deterrents. So yeah. you just plug them into the wall and the animals are like, hey, 
I don't like this noise, so they just leave. It's a little noise that humans can't really hear. But Dogs can't hear either, cats can't hear. It's more so smaller animals. So if you have hamsters, guinea pigs, lizards, I think it could possibly hear it. Best not to use those because it will drive them crazy. Yeah. It's like having a very young garage band that's just learning hey. how to play the drums. Hey! Sir. Hey, sir. He's not listening to us anymore. Hey, sir. Sir. <laughs> he don't listen. So um, obviously Tumnus is feeling better because he actually just finished his last pill today. He's back to his hyper self. He's like playing with his uh, plushie. And he's been good. He's been running around. We've Tomorrow he him. gets the rest of the toys. Today is just the soft toy. Yeah. But today is also a monumental day for him as well. He's being left alone while we go out and get our uh, our shots, so we're gonna. This see is gonna be the first time he's gonna be without anybody. We've gated off the laundry room, and he's just gonna stay in there. We have a furbo, which is like a camera that will watch him, and we can see him on our phone. We're only gonna be gone for about half an hour, so hopefully for the first time ever home alone, it goes well. We're gonna see. We're gonna find out. Anyways. I wanted to update you on the horror movies. For those of you who stick around and watch like this little segment that we do, I love you guys. I don't know if everyone likes it, but I've personally been enjoying it. I was gonna say, based on our scores, I don't think we like it either. You know what, we've seen a lot of bad horror movies on this list. Like people say, you have to watch a lot of bad horror movies to find a good one. And that's what we're doing. It builds character, right? It, yeah. Is that the excuse we're gonna go with? Yeah. <laughs> now let's get into these. So. The next movie we watched is Silent House. Did we talk about that yet? No, I don't believe so. Elizabeth Olsen. Very interesting how the movie was done. So a girl is trapped inside her family's lakeside retreat and becomes unable to contact the outside world as supernatural forces haunt the house with mysterious energy and consequences. Now we didn't realize going into this movie that it was all taken in one take. Now they might have had like secret cuts that you couldn't notice, but it was supposed to be a one take movie for an hour and a half, which was pretty cool. It was from the girl's perspective going around the house. That was probably why we gave the movie the score that we did because if it wasn't a cool one take movie we probably would have given it like a one it didn't hold our attention it didn't hold our attention we got very bored we both gave it a three and those two points were four the way they filmed it that was the score for that then we watched resolution from 2012 now if you guys have seen the movie the endless they're connected same director same world the endless is a sequel believe it or not i love the endless oh my goodness so i knew i was gonna probably sort of like this movie so it's about a man that imprisons his estranged junkie friend in an isolated cabin in the boonies of san diego to force him through a week of sobriety but the events of that week are being mysteriously manipulated so this is like a really really weird movie and i feel like if you haven't seen the endless it might not make any sense and you might not enjoy it as much so weirdly enough i think you should watch the endless first which came after this movie and then watch this movie that makes sense but really i'm just chewing everything puppy life anyway this movie is sort of like a horror comedy even though it's not listed as a comedy the horror elements i feel took a little too long to get into it it's a slow burn it's very strange as they're trying to like kind of prime you for what's going to happen but the character who's playing the drug addict is absolutely hilarious he's really funny we both gave this a six so in my book anything over a five i would recommend someone to watch i don't know if it's the same for ty for me anything over a i five, mean for that one i would gladly watch again because it's silly yeah it's really funny then we watched prometheus from 2012 Following clues to the origin of mankind, a team finds a structure on a distant moon, but they soon realize they are not alone. So obviously this is from like the Alien franchise. I, I didn't like it very much. It was okay. Ty gave it a four, I gave it a three. I feel like Alien movies are hit or miss for me. They really are. I have one statement to say about this movie. What? Handsome Squidward. Yeah. <laughs> Very handsome, good one. Then we watched Willow Creek from 2013, which is a Bigfoot movie. And I'm so excited because you don't really see Bigfoot movies, like, ever. You don't really see Bigfoot ever. Some people do. A man and his girlfriend camp in the woods to capture first-hand evidence of Bigfoot. So this is a found footage movie. This is a found footage movie. <laughs> I can't speak. <laughs> I love found footage movies um, because they just feel so real. Wasn't this made by the same people who worked on the Blair Witch Project? No, I think that's 
the other one on our list that we haven't Oh, watched. okay. Because it was done very much in the same style. Yeah, if you like Blair Witch, I feel like you'll at least enjoy this movie. I gave it a six, which is good. It's over a five, which means I do recommend it. Um, Ty gave it a four. I think it deserved a bit more. It took a bit to get there. Half of the movie takes place in a tent. So if you're okay with like that sort of thing where you're watching literally people just freak out in a tent, it's scary and it feels like you're there with them, but that's that's how it went. Then we watched In Fear from 2013. We watched a lot of movies actually on this list. It might be a little bit long. Driving to a music festival in Ireland, a new couple becomes lost and are then set upon by a tormentor with an unknown motive. This movie was pretty creepy. I gave it a six. I gave it a five. I it's feel like this entire movie, the real villain, was the uh, Irish road planning committee because when it says they're stuck in a maze, they're in a car. Yeah, on but the it's, road. it's just they're lost in like a maze of like an Irish small town. Yeah, it's one of those movies where you're just so frustrated the whole time because like it's like an endless cycle. You think they're about to get out, but then they go back to the start and they're in this cycle of not escaping. It's one of those movies where they're just being chased, but they can't get out. It's definitely worth a watch. I'd recommend it. Low score for me because personally, I think the story could have been a bit better. But you know what? As weird as it is, a five isn't really a low score for you on horror movies. This is one of your like higher ones because he doesn't really rate them over a four. I'm very critical. You are. Like, too critical, I think. Then we watched We Are What We Are from 2013. The Parkers, a reclusive family who follow ancient customs, find their secret existence threatened as a torrential downpour moves into their area, forcing daughters Iris and Rose to assume responsibilities beyond those of a typical family. Now, because this has been out for a while and it's literally exposed in the first, like, 20 minutes of the movie, they're, like, cannibals this family and it basically is them trying to like conceal their identity and go about their customs and it's really creepy. When the rain comes down, the bones wash out. It's creepy, it's an interesting concept. I think they could have done better and they lost my attention partway through the movie. So I gave it a three, Ty gave it a two. It's a slow burn, it's a very slow burn. If you like waiting an hour and a half until it starts picking up, then you'll like this movie. <laughs> it's just like nothing for like an hour and a half. Then we watched The Den from 2013. While studying the habits of webcam chat users from the apparent safety of her own home, a young woman's life begins to spiral out of control after witnessing a grisly murder online. If you like movies like Unfriended, like those movies that take place like from a computer screen, you'll like this movie. I gave it a three, <laughs> I gave it a four. Mine was so low just because I found the first half of the movie intriguing and then the last half I didn't like. I can't say I'm a big fan of the let's just screen record a movie sort of deal. I like, like it. Unfriended. I think it's unique. And all that stuff. Yes, it's unique, but the, it's not unique anymore. They've done it so many times now. Then we watched Where from 2014 and I liked this movie. It's hard being a big hairy man. <laughs> A defense attorney begins to suspect that there might be more to her client who is charged with the murders of a vacationing family than meets the eye. That's a strange grammatical... Does that sound weird? It does sound weird, but I feel it's still correct because English is just weird. I think between the commas, the, the, it was just too long. Anyway, yeah, it's about a guy who they are trying to figure out if he's uh, a werewolf. Well... They're trying to see if this client that they Was have the is actually crime. capable of committing a grisly murder. But obviously it's a werewolf movie. I really liked it. I gave it a seven, which is like one of the highest ones on here, aside from the eight. I gave it a five. I liked it. I was it's, really- It's intrigued. a unique way of doing it because it's not like, oh, there's this ancient curse or whatever. They're trying to ground it in reality. With a disease. And it's not silly guys dressed up in wolf costumes running around. Yeah, like the only thing that Ty was saying is he wished they had more of a transformation because it really is just hairy guys. Duking it out, like yeah. Fighting. <laughs> Big hairy guys. I think Ty wanted to see a bit more werewolf, but I liked how it was, I thought it was unique. Then we watched Goodnight Mommy, which we believe is an Austrian film. It's either Austrian or German. I don't think it was German. Please comment down below if you know. I think it's Austrian. Um, but it's called Goodnight Mommy in, in English from 2014 because the title is Ich Stay. Itch say, which I probably didn't say right at all. If you know what that is, I think it's Austrian. Twin boys move to a new house with their mother after she has face changing cosmetic surgery, but under the bandages is someone the boys don't recognize. Ty called the twist in this movie 
almost right away. But I think Ty's just really, like that's just how he is with movies. I don't think if you watched it, you would figure it out that quickly. I think if you don't know the twist, you'd probably find this movie way better. But I think because Ty knew early on, we weren't as thrilled with it. It is suspenseful though. It is, it's suspenseful. It's a good mystery. Um, we both gave it a four. So I don't know if I'd recommend it, but I don't know. It's okay. It's a little messed up. It's messed up. It's a little messed up. Then we watched Housebound from 2014. This was a horror comedy. A young woman is forced to return to her childhood home after being placed under house arrest where she suspects that something evil may be lurking. So it's like she's stuck in a potential haunted house uh, under house arrest. It was an intriguing plot and I like finding a good horror comedy. Unfortunately, this didn't hit the mark. There were some moments where you and I were laughing, but I wasn't interested. I gave it a three, I gave it a four. And then last night we watched Dark Was the Night from 2014. An evil is unleashed in a small town when a logging company sets up shop in the neighboring woods. We both gave it a two. That logging company thing is only in the first three minutes and that's it. That's the only time it's brought up. Yeah, that's so true. It's a monster movie and I think it was a lower budget movie, which is fine. I feel like you can do horror on lower budget perfectly. I mean, Blair Witch was a really, really low budget movie. But what Blair Witch did is that they didn't show the creature or the witch that was stalking them. And I think that's what they should have done in this movie because they were so low budget, the CGI was really, really bad. And that just took you right out of being immersed in it. They had like the quick glimpses here and Which there. Was good. And that was great. If they played to those strengths and not showing the full monster, because as soon as you saw what the full monster looked like, you're like, yeah. It looked like something out of a video game. Like it was just not. Quite literally, it looked like a character out of a Resident Evil game. I'm not gonna put the picture up because that's just gonna ruin it. Not a character, But a I monster. wouldn't recommend watching it anyway. Could have been good. Could have, could have been. Could have been. <laughs> and the whole movie is like in this weird blue filter, which drove me nuts. Except when they're only in certain buildings, then yeah, it's yellow. doesn't make any sense. Anyways, that was a lot of movies we watched. For people wondering like how we have time for this, <laughs> we work during the day and then in the evening we watch like two in a row. Two or three. And like we only post vlogs like twice a week, so it just works out. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this. I hope you have a good rest of your day and uh, we'll see you in our next vlog. Mystery boxes are out right now. Almost sold out halfway through. Link down below. All right guys, see you in our next vlog. Bye. I, I can't wave. Tumnus has me pinned. <laughs>